Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight is night eight, and my commitment to record one Coding Bat video a night as long as the schools are closed. I realize that some of you might want access to the comments and the various versions of code, so I've actually started a repository on my GitHub um, site. You can look me up under PMSQ. Feel free to access anything else you want on there. And I will put my solutions in there for you to jump into and grab. All right, let's dive in. So Python, warm-up one, pause neg. Given two int values, return true if one is negative and one is positive. Except if the parameter negative is true, then return true only if both are negative. So now let's look at the examples to make sure we understand this. Pause neg. First parameter is one, second parameter is negative one, and false. So that returns true because one is positive and one is negative. And we see that the negative sign is false. Second example, pause neg. We have one, one, and this is false, so we return true. And the third example, negative four, negative five, and notice in this case, the negative parameter is set to true. And if the parameter negative is true, return true only if both are negative. And we can see both are negative, so we get true. So if we look at the first example here, or the first solution, in the first approach, we first check the negative, make a decision based on A and B. So we say if negative is equivalent to false, and then we have to check, in this case, if one is positive and the other is negative. So we want to check if, so two possibilities, if A is less than zero and B is greater than or equal to zero, or if B is less than zero and A is greater than or equal to zero, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. Then we check if negative is true, meaning this is a situation where they both have to be negative. And in this case, we check if A is less than zero and B is less than zero, we return true. Otherwise, we refer to false. And I hit click go earlier, and you see this works. Now, this is really long, um, and there's lots of ways to kind of tighten this up. So let's take a look at a couple. So the first thing we can do is we can take note that if this Boolean expression evaluates to true, we return true. And if evaluates to false, we return false. So in the second approach here, what I've done is I simply have the same if negative is false and if negative is true, but I just return the expression. And I hit go. And notice it worked perfectly well. But what's really important to highlight here is this will not work if you are trying to code it this way in Java. And I'll explain that down below. So let's go for an explanation of why this won't work in Java. So the reason this won't work in Java is because in Java, you have to specify a return type. And even though you logically can look at this and say, well, if negative is false, we go in here. And if negative is true, go into, into here. So you can look at this and say, I know that that will return something. The compiler in Java doesn't know that. And so therefore, what it says is, your return statements are inside if statements, but what happens if I don't go in either one? And so I just highlight this point because Python's a little more forgiving. What happens if it doesn't reach a return statement, it just returns none, and it can just kind of continue on its way. So what we do is we're going to take approach two and optimize it, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this second if statement here because we know for a fact that if negative is not false, it must be true, so I don't need it. And we can comment that in here. There it is. Maybe I should show you all of them to be sure, I, so you know I'm not trying to trick you. Okay. Now, this is where I get really excited. Because I haven't, only recently I really thought about using this operator here, and I, when I show in my class I thought it was really cool. Um, you can use something called an XOR. This is really ugly to read. And I'm going to pause for a second and kind of just write a little table in here so you can see what XOR looks like. Okay, so I tried to tighten all this into one little screen here so we can see it. So let's start by just talking about what XOR is. So XOR means exclusive OR. You might be familiar with OR. If we have A and B, these are two values. Zero is false, one is true. So zero or zero. So A or B would give me zero. If we had zero, one. A or B would give me 1, because one of them is true. If I have 1 and 0, 
A or B would give me 1. And if I had 1 and 1, A or B would give me 1. Because the OR operator says that either of them are true. But the exclusive OR is really nice because what it does is it only accounts if one or the other is true. And in this case, this is really useful because what it does is it means that if both statements are true, it generates zero. So notice how the first three cases are the same as the OR, but it's this last case, the one one case, where OR returns one, but exclusive OR returns zero. So what I can do here is I can say exactly the same as up here, if negative is false. And instead of writing this really long statement that deals with the two situations, I can say A is less than zero, exclusive OR, that's how we write it, B is less than zero. Otherwise return A is less than zero and B is less than zero. And we hit go, and there's that nice solution there. Now I'm going to show you in my last, if you watched my last video from the end of the night, I talked about the importance of brackets, and this actually caused me to scratch my head for a little bit, because I very rarely use this operator. And I started off by writing this. And I, I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. And I realized that what it's doing actually is it's an order of operations issue here. It's actually doing the exclusive or first, and then it's doing the, the, the less than signs. So by putting the brackets around it, that's saying, I want you to check if A is less than zero, I want you to check if B is less than zero, and exclusive or those two situations, meaning only return true if one of them is true. Nice little, nice little idea there. Okay, so approach four, let's comment this back out. Approach four is, you know, basically I've gone in one line this and it's really long. And you hit go and it works. And again, if you want to take a closer look at this, you can come into my coding batch solutions and you can pull them. And then finally approach, I guess this would be approach five. I have gone and kind of simplified this. So here where I have, you know, negative is equivalent to false. Instead I said, if not negative and remember this big long statement here, we were just talking about previously. This can all be condensed down to this exclusive or here. And then I just, here we have negative is true, meaning we can just say negative, and I left the A is less than zero and B is less than zero. And that works there. So I hope this video helped. Um, like I said, the exclusive or is a nice, um, a nice, a nice, Boolean operator I don't get to use very often, and so just keep that one in the back pocket. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a good day.